In early 2019, we left Los Angeles in search of a better life. We sold our stuff, moved to a cheap city, and got the fuck outside. At last. We knew we wanted to start a business that would support this whole new life, but we didn't know what it would look like or where it would take us. So we decided to document the whole process. <laughs> we are the entrepreneurs, and this is our story. It's day three. Ready? And action. So today we're in... Wait, stop. So today we're in Windsor. No. Um, let's can't go past. Ready? No. So today we're in Windsor. I'm stood right in front of Windsor Castle, which is one of the other castles that the royal family stay in. We're about 40 minutes out of London. And we're gonna spend a little bit of time looking around the castle. Mm. Today we are about to get the train to Camden so Chad can get his tattoo. We both had day jobs and were working remotely so we spent the first half of our day on our laptops at home. As a reward for staying on top of things we ventured out to Camden Town later that day. I hadn't been since I was a teenager, so I was looking forward to showing Chad a different side of London. So we are about to get the work done. I'm going to be getting it right here on my chest. She's about to apply it. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. Let's make this happen. How are you feeling? Fine. It's yeah. Spots of ouch, but yeah. Yeah. So far. That is bad. The endorphins are still kicking in, so you know. We had come to London in search of art and inspiration. Chad took it a step further and got a piece of London art inked on him permanently. We've since revisited the skull wearing a crown in an upcoming Filthland project. The day should have ended on a high note, but instead I was feeling anything but. Yesterday fucking sucked. <laughs> Yesterday was like every reason not to go and do a travel blog and not to have a business that revolves around travel and it was the first time that I really questioned what the fuck we were doing. I really feel like insane. And we talked about it and Chad was like, you know, travel's gonna be rough, right? Like you don't get, your sleep schedule's messed up, you drink enough water, you're dehydrated from the plane. It's hard to like eat on a schedule, like it really is. Like if it's hard enough to just travel as a regular person, it's really, really challenging to travel as a person that has a mental illness. And that really hit me yesterday. Like I realized I thought I was doing fine and kind of bouncing along and had not bothered to engage in proper self-care. And it smacked me in the face. Like I got I I got the consequences of not doing that yesterday. We decided we didn't want to stay cooped up at home and headed to the Tate Britain to get our work done there. I had heard that there was a cafe with Wi-Fi on the grounds of the museum, so we brought our laptops and grabbed coffees. So one of the challenges that we are up against when we're traveling is finding places to work. Yesterday, I went online and I started Googling good coffee shops to work in in London. And what came up instead was a website that listed about 17 places for freelancing and not everything that they included was a coffee shop. And I thought this is kind of cool because after a while drinking overpriced coffees and being crushed into some tiny space and struggling to find an electrical outlets starts to wear a little thin. So I think moving forward, if we're going to be in a major city, what we need to do is probably Google places to work um, if you work from home or you freelance 
in advance and try and book our accommodations and kind of schedule our trip a little bit around where those places seem to be. So we're in the Great Court of the British Museum and we've come here today to scoop it out as a potential place to come get some work done. We've heard that there's a cafe around the corner and I've seen some seating options. So we're gonna give this a go and see if our Wi-Fi works and if it's any good, we're gonna come back tomorrow and try and get some work done here. I feel traumatized. I do, like, this has been a very hard couple of days. What did I say today? Like, me, like living your dream is hard. What I thought might have been hard, I don't think I've even gotten to, and what I thought would be easy or taken granted for proved to be really hard. But the best thing really truly that we want and, and you should consider while traveling as a contractor is to get our own business running mm -hmm. so that we can be global and mm -hmm. can continue to work from wherever. Yeah. Um, so we've learned a lot on this trip and I think that'll be incredibly beneficial for us when we do go mm -hmm. to a place that's a little bit tougher mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. England. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm thankful for that. We were a little beaten down with the challenges we've been having working remotely. So we decided to cheer ourselves up by going to look at dead people. Karl Marx is buried here. <laughs> In case you were wondering, he is here and he's buried. <laughs> Everyone we spoke to insisted we go to Highgate. And once we got there, we knew why. The tombstones were so densely packed and overgrown, it felt like we'd entered a city for the dead. The spooky mood and the rapidly approaching nightfall quickly made us forget the stresses of overcrowded museums and dodgy Wi-Fi. Well, almost. A blind man and a deaf man managed to travel around the world. What's that excuse to be? Internet. After five days in London, we were starting to feel a bit lost. We were enjoying our trip, but we sensed that there was something else out there that we hadn't stumbled across yet. And with just four days left, time was running out. <laughs> 